The B movie is a dumb masterpiece. If you haven't seen the B movie before, I don't even know what you're doing with your life. The B movie was released in 2007 to barely a response by critics and fans alike until around the year 2016 when it was used in memes and now it is one of DreamWorks most popular movies of all time. This movie won the poll on my Instagram page of what movie I was going to do next so if you want to be a part of those go to at Shit Bandicoot Clips. This movie has a really stupid plot right but for some reason it's very enjoyable to watch. Like all the other movies I'm going to cover it, break down all the idiotic things found in the movie and I hope you enjoy it. They, they actually killed the DreamWorks guy. I don't think I've ever seen him fall off that moon before. This is a first. The movie opens up at Jerry Seinfeld's house where he's trying to choose a sweater. Very quickly, we see what the uses of honey are gonna be in this movie. And like the first two minutes of the movie, he uses this mouthwash, hair gel, uh, there's gas somewhere. And we soon find out that Jerry Seinfeld's eyes are blue and no one else's eyes in these movies are blue. He also likes to use his antenna as a phone, which makes absolutely no sense in this movie. <laughs> he does this quite a few times. No time in this movie, it makes sense. He heads off to graduation and why are they driving cars? Why do bees need cars? He's getting a tour of the factory when a cute bee girl in the back waves to him. That girl was hot. She's my cousin. She is? Yes, we're all cousins. If you've seen this movie, you already know what this joke is. They're riding on this boat thing that's kind of wasting all the honey that they have. So they really could just fly around the factory and they'd be fine. There's a reason why they don't fly around and we'll get to that reason. It's stupid and makes no sense, but we'll get to it. Barry's also kind of dumb because he's only been alive for nine days and he has no idea what he's doing there, even though he was he learned about it in school like his entire life after orientation barry and adam walk down the street and we get we get to see a lot of things on this one part of the city let's start with the seven stings how do you sting someone seven times and live we're bees we're the most perfectly functioning society on earth what is this intersection <laughs> why do they even need these cars you know what i give up on the cars i'm done i'm done talking about the cars barry and adam walk to where the pollen jocks are and Barry's trying to impress the girls, you know, because he's a, he's a ladies' man, obviously. If you haven't seen this movie, we'll get to that. The pollen jocks go and bully him, and then they leave. He has a little chat with his parents about what he wants to do with his life, and they don't listen. The next day, he's going to pick jobs with Adam. They mention how they can keep track of when a bee dies, and then a job opening comes available. But how? <laughs> how do you keep track of that? Is there, like, microchips in everybody? So do you instantly know when a bee dies? Is it connected to their heart? Barry takes advantage and sneaks off and very easily joins the pollen jocks. The general doesn't question why a bunch of his veteran pollen jocks took this little kid from college out with them. They all get set, but they're all checking separate things, which is very useless to their mission. And then they leave the hive. Look very closely when he first leaves the hive. I was debating this with my friend the other day. That might be the Twin Towers. <laughs> this frisbee guy is really committed to getting that frisbee. The pollen jocks end up sucking up flowers, but then they get entranced by this moving flower. Turns out to be a tennis ball. And Barry, who has never seen one of these before, lays on it and gets stuck on it. Oh! Right? You know, I don't think these are flowers. And then we count to see how many times Barry could have been killed in this scene. Let's see. There's one. There's two. There's a third. Oh, there's a fourth. Five. Six. Definitely seven. <laughs> Once Barry finally deals with all the bullshit and gets out, it starts to rain. Can't fly in rain. Can't fly in rain. They can fly in rain. That's not a thing. Coincidentally, Barry flies right into the apartment of those two people playing tennis, and holy shit, they got out of Central Park fast. And you changed outfits? These are winter boots. Best character in the movie. Flower Lady saves Barry's life, and then Barry contemplates whether or not he's gonna talk to the human, which is forbidden, but he's like, uh, she, saved my, she saved my life, so I might as well. You like jazz? That sums up the movie right there. You like jazz? After freaking out a bit that Barry can talk, she accepts that bees can talk now and is offering him coffee and stuff. She also stabs her hand, so there's that. <laughs> Barry and Flower Girl go up to the roof and they're having a nice time chatting it up. This electrician comes in and he's trying to fix a light bulb and like can obviously hear the bee because everybody else in this movie can hear it. And then he dies. This is one of a few instances of 
interspecies relationships. We cut to Barry's house where he's wastefully using honey as a pool. Barry's already having fantasies about this girl. And apparently one of them is crashing into a giant rock with a plane. He goes out of the hive to hang out with the human once again where she discusses the Tournament of Roses, which is really stupid as well. How come you don't fly everywhere? It's exhausting. I call bullshit. I call bullshit on all of this. Flower Girl and Barry are in the store chatting it up in one of the aisles. And one of the grocery store people hears it. What is wrong with you? It's a bug. Well, he's not bothering anybody. Get out of here, you creep. And then we get one of the weirdest scenes in the entire movie. And that's saying something. The entire movie kind of revolves around Barry being mad that the humans are stealing honey. He is here. I sense it. He hears a bee. Stick to a thing of honey. And then Barry's threatening violence on this guy. Why is the guy afraid of a bee? So instead of just, you know smashing the bee getting it over with a fencing match with a bee and he's losing no just no how do you even feel that he gets stuck to the truck window carrying all the honey and stuff barry gets sucked up to the top of the truck and is driven to the honey farm mosquito girls try to trade up a moth dragonfly you don't girl don't want no mosquito. The second example of interspecies relationships. And it's normalized. Barry gets driven straight to the bee farm. A bee's got a brain the size of a pinhead. They are pinheads. Why do you guys hate bees so much? What did a bee do to you? <laughs> do all beekeepers hate bees? <laughs> did a bee steal your girl once? He goes into the honey farm and sees the condition of all the bees that got smoked. This is your queen? That's a man in woman's clothes. That's a drag queen. Jerry Seinfeld is unfunny. Barry flies out and pulls out a camera that he has now. Where did he get the camera? The movie's not gonna explain that. I f***ed a cricket once in San Antonio. Man, those crazy legs kept me up all night. That chiwa. <laughs> Why is this something that an uncle would say? Yeah, I had sex with a cricket once. <laughs> those legs kept me up all night. <laughs> Barry goes on the B News and meets B Larry King, which is a horrible pun. They could have done a lot better with that. Larry Bees have never been afraid to change the world. I mean, what about B Columbus? B Gandhi? B Jesus? B Jesus! Barry goes back to Flower Girl and plans to make a lawsuit against the human race. You can't sue a human race. Let's get that out of the way. They end up settling for an industry which you can't do that either. And to top it all off, he's getting his main resource of help with this from a flower girl. I'm helping him sue the human race. What? Why is yogurt night so difficult? Ken is the best character in the movie. Ken will continue to be awesome. So after all this legal stuff, it somehow makes it to court. I think the world just wanted to hear a bee talk and this was the only place they were gonna do it. I don't know why the humans believed a flower girl that bees could talk. It sounds pretty insane. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld is unfunny. The humans, thinking that bees could talk, were anxiously waiting for the bee to talk, and their only reaction is, huh. No, nice. That's that's nice. Not holy shit. A bee's talking. If we were to live in the topsy turvy world, Mr. Benson imagines, just, just 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 think of what it would mean. Maybe I would have to negotiate with the silkworm for the elastic in my britches. Put that away. We're in court. <laughs> this has got to be the worst legal teams I've ever seen. First, we have two bees and a flower girl who is the prosecution, keep in mind. And then there's the legal team representing a whole industry filled with fat-ass Colonel Sanders wannabe. We get to see some of the witnesses. They make a few honey puns. And then we get a cameo from Sting. Ray Liotta shows up for a bit. And then Ray Liotta tries to murder him. Later that night, Vanessa and Barry are getting all acquainted with one another. We got a candlelight dinner. They're getting all... Mm -hmm. And then Ken comes home and he's ready to kick some ass. It is absolutely ridiculous that Ken is afraid of losing his girlfriend to a bee. And somehow he's kind of justified based on what the movie's presenting. So then Barry goes to use the bathroom, which I have a lot of questions about that. And Ken comes in and tries to kill Barry. He tries to even burn his own house down with flames. And he happens to be the nicest bee I've met in a long time. Long time? What are you talking about? Are there other bugs in your life? I prefer sugar-free artificial sweeteners made by man! <laughs> 
<laughs> this movie is worth watching just for him alone. Just a just a small thing. I didn't I didn't think I was gonna skip this over. They brought a bear into court. <laughs> and the judge allowed this. The judge continues to be horrible by letting the defense just berate the prosecution for no reason. Adam gets all mad at this guy because he insinuated that Barry and Flower Girl were having a relationship, which they definitely were in some cases. Adam goes and stings the defense attorney. The movie never really wrote him as that kind of character. And then he goes and tries to kill himself. That's not the more interesting part here. Oh, an angel of mercy will come forward to suck the poison from my healing bucket. <coughs> Get that out of my face. That was a genuine reaction of thinking about it. Before the next day in court, Barry gets a revelation about his case, which he somehow didn't have beforehand. And then Barry comes in with a smoke gun. He makes a case that they're harming bees, and then the defense picks up the gun and executes about the first row of bees. Living out our lives as honey slaves to the white man! This is a classic clip. After all this, the judge rules in favor of the bees, which you can't do because it's a jury trial. Hey, who are you wearing? Uh, my sweater's Ralph Lauren and I have no pants. Does Ralph Lauren make bee clothes? Didn't the humans just figure out that bees can talk? After the decision that bees deserve to have their honey, the court basically let Barry control the military. And in the end, socialism kills a bunch of flowers. After Adam loses his job, he goes and blames Barry, which is very hypocritical of Adam to do, considering that Adam was on the legal team. And then we find out that the bees not doing anything causes a bunch of plants to die. Doesn't look very good, does it? No. And whose fault do you think that is? They devise a plan to help while the flowers grow again by finding the remaining flowers at the Tournament of Roses. They kill a lady, hijack a float, steal some flowers, then get through airport security without anybody questioning all those flowers, and no one does anything about it. Barry goes to talk to the pilots because they were going to be delayed even though they're already flying. These two pilots have the most appropriate reaction to Barry talking to them at all and a bee just being there. They try to kill the bee <laughs> and then they knock each other out. Somehow the bee news finds out about this and they broadcast it to the other bees. Flower girl and the bee have to try to land this plane and air traffic control is doing jack shit while this is happening. So then a bunch of bees show up. A bunch of bees come underneath the plane and the bees start flying the plane down which just saying that out loud hurts my head. I've seen this movie already, and I'm dumbfounded by that idea. Vanessa awkwardly tries to steer the plane even though the bees are flying it and she has no control over the plane anymore. The bees somehow land this plane. Barry gives a speech to the bees. Bees take their guns and repollinate the world in seconds, might I add. Flower Girl's business is skyrocketing thanks to the bees actually getting off their asses and doing something. What was the point of the jury in the whole trial anyway? The jury did nothing. <laughs> they weren't even there. They were berated by this fat bastard. A cow shows up and apparently cows can talk too, which no one's gonna question a cow talking now that a bee's talked. And then they attack lawyers using the mosquito. End movie. Here's the deal with this movie. It is really stupid. A lot of it is dumb. Some of it is unfunny. But it's one of those movies where everything kind of works. I can't describe how it works, but it does. It makes it an entertaining movie to watch. It's definitely a fun movie to make fun of. Before I give my rating, we of course will go into King of the Hill. King of the Hill, for anybody that is new here, is I rank all the movies that I've previously reviewed and the best movie is considered the king of the hill and moves on to the next movie reviews. Currently, the holder is Good Burger, and I think the B movie beats it. To me, the B movie would be more enjoyable to watch than Good Burger. So, the B movie is the new king of the hill. As for my rating of this movie, we're going to give it about we're going to give it about a 6. The soundtrack's really good. The animation looks nice. 2007, that's not bad even though they started production like the year 2000. It's not a bad overall product. <laughs> Seriously, the writing is the worst part of this movie. They actually have good character development. Ken being my one of my favorite characters that I've reviewed so far. That is going to be the end of this movie review, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. If you have any more movie suggestions for me, I highly recommend you send them in because I would love to do more of these. I already have a lot of suggestions right now, which I'm glad I would love to take more too. If you want to be a part of voting for the next movie, once again, go to at Shep Clips on Instagram. B-movie. You like jazz?